Hello, it's Matt Thomas looking at the Synth TV for Sonic Academy. So before we dive into the nitty gritty of this synth, I'd like to do an overview, as you'll know if you've watched these lessons before. So let's do that now. Let's quickly talk through what's on the front of this synth, the basic overview of the features. We'll come back in future chapters and look at them in depth. First thing to establish about the Synth TV that's different to maybe some other synths you come across, it's modular. You could argue it's semi-modular, and I'd love you to take that argument onto the internet, onto a forum where I am not, and enjoy that. Really, really push your case. Because in my head, it's a modular synth, but I don't mind. In yours, it can be semi. That's fine. Because the difference to me is, does it have a hardwired signal path? As in, if you don't add cables, or in this case, pins, do you still get a certain set of features wired up a certain way? And with the Synth V, with no pins in, you get silence. Each one of these little areas boxed off, can think of it like a module in a modular synth. Okay, so there's one oscillator module, there's another oscillator module, over here's the filter module. And until you connect them using this patch board, which we'll come to shortly, they're not doing anything to each other. They are individual, discrete little circuits just sitting in their own world, and they don't work until you wire them together. So, in that respect, it is a modular synth. Yes, it's a preset package, but it's a modular synth. I'm glad we've got into that and got it out of the way. If none of this meant anything to you, that's good. You're still sane. On we go. Oscillator 1. Okay, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 behave very similarly. They have what's called a vernier knob here. When you use the real thing, you turn this inner knob and the outer one turns really slowly. It's like being a Mission Impossible safe cracker. It is immensely satisfying, I can't tell you. So yeah, if you can get your hands on the real thing, you can't sort of go the whole way from top to bottom because your wrist will snap. You'll, kind of, you'll do a whole 360 on the inner knob and the outer knob's only gone a little distance. The reason for this is you can get incredibly precise dialing in of frequencies. It's crap for doing big sweeps. Much better for kind of nailing the exact hertz that you want, okay? At the top end, this will go to nearly 17k. The bottom end, it comes down to about half a hertz. And the same is true for oscillator 2. The only thing different between these two is you have a choice of waveforms. On oscillator 1 you have sine and saw, and oscillator 2 you have square and triangle, and you can set the levels of each. Oscillator 3 is similar to 2 in that you again have square and triangle as your waveforms, but here's the difference. Frequency range runs from much lower, it goes down to 0 0.015, so like, you know, down like a, I don't know what's that, an 80th of a hertz or something? Maybe I'm wrong, who knows? Uh, anyway, I think it's about an 80th of a hertz. And at the top end only goes up to just shy of 500. So this is basically an LFO. Unlike a typical monosynth, the LFO isn't hardwired as a modulation source. You can still use this as a tone. So oscillator 1, 2, and 3 can all be used as tones, or indeed 1, 2, or 3 can be used as modulation sources, and that's what makes you know, the Synthy V the king of wibble. None of this is locked down. If you want to get weird with it, you can. Next, we've got a noise generator. Very simple, it makes white noise. You can control how bright that noise is, whether it's kind of full white or down here through to pink and brown, which are different names of describing how bright the noise is. And you've got a level. As with the oscillators, you have level on virtually every single module of the Synthy V. This is because with a modular synth, you tend to have a lot of VCAs to control the level of modules into each other. So EMS and Arteria have retained the same idea, and simply they've just put a level into each module, so how much signal you get, how much oscillator, etc., how much modulation if you're using it, is set with the level in the module. Next we have the output filters. Now you have one, two outputs on the Synthy V. You can use them with stereo, you can use them with separate mono outputs. All the output filters do is they can make an individual output either darker in tone or brighter in tone. It's a very broad band pass, effectively. Gets thinner and brighter gets darker and fuller. Okay, so that's like a spare, very simple filter, not to be confused with the main filter up here, which you can do much more with, but you have got this control of both outputs. And you've also got channel level and channel pan, very simple, just output level, pan of the signal. So again, stick it left and right if you want a stereo thing going on, or you can have two individuals. We'll skip past the matrix for a second and over to the next module, which is the filter oscillator. Now this is a low pass filter, very simple, you can cut the top end of the frequencies by bringing this down, so... You have response, which is what we often see labelled as resonance, or Q. The higher this is, the more of a feedback we get at the frequency point, which makes the, uh, the famous kind of filter squelch. 
I take it right off, we get a very dry filter. And as with many resonant filters, you can take it up into full resonance, hence it says here oscillators. You get to the final kind of top few settings, and the resonance is so high it becomes a tone. Now if I don't send the oscillator into the filter, if there's nothing coming into the filter, it will still make that resonance. And you can use the filter oscillator as a fourth oscillator. It's great to use as a sort of fixed oscillator. Here you can hear it's right down the low frequencies. You can use that for a bit of modulation. But yep, you've got the potential to use the filter as a fourth oscillator. Okay, let's put that back in there. Okay, but sawtooth back in. Okay, next is ring mod. Simply have a level here because ring mod doesn't really need any controls. You simply send two signals into the ring mod circuit. That's done over here. We'll look at this on the matrix in a second. And you simply decide how loud the signal coming out of the ring mod is here with the level. So this is the sample and hold section. Arturia came up with this as a little extra on the Synthi V. It's not a standard item on the original. EMS did used to make uh, what they call the random voltage generator at this time. So it's very era appropriate to add this in. Basically a very similar circuit. So this can be used to grab a signal as it comes in. And at whatever rate you set here, it repeatedly looks at the value of that signal as it comes in and then holds it until it takes the next value and the next value and the next value. If you've encountered one of these before, this is very basic stuff. If you haven't, you're thinking, why do you want to grab values? It'll be much easier when we start playing with it to understand why. But it's basically a modulation circuit, really. It grabs things and kind of squares off moving, sweeping modulation voltages into stepped, hard-edged sources. That said, if you want to put some slur back between these stepped sources, you have a slew control here. So. Better that we come and look at this properly in a moment, but basically a modulation source that can grab some of your other signals and chop them, hold them, send them on elsewhere. Right, next to the envelope shaper. Now the Synthi V has an unusual envelope. It's not your usual attack decay sustained release or even an attack decay release or any of the stuff you sometimes see. It is essentially a what they call a, a trapezoid. You have an attack. Okay, we know that. That's pretty straightforward how long it takes for the signal to rise to full. Then we have a fixed duration of on. It holds for a certain amount of time. And ordinarily on envelopes, we have only a sustain, which is held until we release. But with the Arteria and the, uh, the original EMS, you could set a time on for how long it held the full signal. Then you have a decay back down to nothing. And then, again unusually, you have an off, which is how long the envelope is off before it repeats. So this is a looping envelope. When off is set to 10, it's just a simple one-shot envelope. When I pull this back, you'll find that the envelope starts acting as a looping envelope, the times of which are set by the on and the off, and the attack and the decay set the sort of shape and character of the envelope. And I'll give you a quick demo. That's currently just set on a instant attack, instant decay, on off. When I play this keyboard, it plays. However, if I bring manual down, you can hear it's repeating. Okay, when it's on manual, I have to manually trigger it, but if it comes below manual, takes an amount of time to repeat the envelope. You see, if I make that off shorter, it gets quicker. I can also make the length of that note longer with the on. And similarly, you can sweep it up. So an unusual envelope, that one. Now down here it says trapezoid and signal. The envelope shaper can be used in two ways simultaneously. It can send out a modulation signal, so that envelope can be applied to, say, filter frequency or pitch of an oscillator. And it also sends the signal of the sound, if you want to feed into it, through it, and it acts as a volume control on the envelope. So like a, it's essentially this envelope is applied to a VCA and controls the volume of the sound. So you can do both at once. This little red button here is because on the original uh, Synthi V, well, on the original VCS3, synthesizer that predated the synthy, there was no keyboard and the only way to set off the sound was to hit attack. 
So that's a, a leftover from the original VCS3, the, uh, the precursor to the Synthi. Next of all, we've got the reverb inside. The Synthi V is an actual reverb spring, a little reverb tank. So you can mix reverb and it's a proper clangy, nasty old reverb, lovely thing, level there. And we've got plastic on the big sort of front panel, as it were, we've got uh, a joystick. And this joystick can be wiggled around and simply how much voltage is output by the left and right or the up and down is decided here. And you can route that again using the matrix to all kinds of parts of the synth. So I'll pause there, we'll look at the matrix next, and then we'll move on, look at the sequencer and the expanded sections. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.